Hello everybody and welcome to KDH Art Class. Today let's talk about kinetic art. Kinetic art is art that moves. So if you're a little bit old school like myself, you might refer to these as mobiles, things that uh, we made using coat hangers and uh, who knows what, I mean, anything and everything around the house. So, some options are out there. Uh, you could make all kinds of, um, well, let's see, what have I done in the past? I've done a bunch of little God's eyes in which you can, oh, won't be able to get that one off, which you can then hang these down and they could move. I know, there's your kinetic art, art that moves. Okay. You could make a bunch of the, um, oh, what did I call them, sun catchers. You could do the smaller medallions that will spin around, so pretty. Uh, you could do the ones that we did in the uh, lid of a coffee can lid, which I had plenty of. Or you could just find any of the Tupperware type lids and uh, just find some found objects and some glue. But uh, if you want to know more about this project, just go to KDH Art Class and uh, you can look up the sun catchers with found objects. I think I might have even called it mosaics because you are creating art with lots of little bitty found pieces. Okay. But today we're going to take a milk carton, cut it up, and I'm going to use a branch from my backyard. I've been doing a lot of spring cleaning lately. And I'm going to create butterflies, as you can see from this one, from my milk carton. I'm going to use a uh, Sharpie type permanent ink markers so that it'll last outside a little bit longer. It'll probably still fade, but uh, this will probably be uh, hanging under the trees. Get a little bit of shade, a little bit of protection from the UV light and the sunlight that will take away the vivid colors, but what's neat is I can always go back in and refresh it. I could even be using uh, nail polish, would probably work really well in this. Uh, acrylic paints, you know, whatever you have around the house. Okay, so as you can see, I took just a milk carton and uh, I would recommend drawing whatever shapes on it that you would like. So if you want to do Let's pick an easy shape. Let's, uh, for me, hearts. And some of you may sit there and go like, oh, my hearts never turn out perfect. Well, hearts are symmetrical. So if you draw half a heart, and I just bent my <laughs> milk carton here. If you draw half a heart, you can trace around it. Of course, draw it and then cut it out. And I did this with... <laughs> Another lid from, I think it was oatmeal or container or coffee container. So I, I take the lids and even, you know, cereal box and stuff like that. So once I've done half of the heart, cut it out, then I can make my symmetrical looking heart simply by flipping over my half heart and I can create all kinds of simple shapes everywhere. Okay, And I filled them in in all kinds of places. You can uh, sit there and do them there. Now I like my hearts to not be perfectly symmetrical. I just think they're more fun that way. And I'm so thankful that it became kind of folk art, uh, almost chic in a way to have these different shaped hearts kind of going off in different directions. I would keep in mind the skill level of the person cutting 
in terms of how elaborate and how much detail you do it. Even simple circles would make a great mobile. Um, but like I said, I did butterflies. Once you have these here, then it's a matter of cutting them out. Um, many times I just sit there and advise the kids to have their parents do this next part. And honestly, parents, I took this and I simply cut around and cut down the lines. So I kind of have a line here and just simply cut down. So then you have more flat sheets when you cut these out. Even just cutting that one line makes it so much easier for your scissors to get in there and cut around the shape first. You don't ever want to try and cut the shape out while it's still on that three-dimensional piece. And then it's easier to cut out. So parents, it's up to you how challenging you want this to be for your child. You could collect a bunch of uh, Tupperware lids. Uh, these little plastic lids are great. Again, you could just use uh, cereal boxes, you know, to anything you want. But like I said, I wanted mine to survive outside. So I have taken my milk carton. <laughs> I cut it all up. And I have uh, <laughs> kind of cut the basic shape. And then when I got it out, I folded it and cut around with my scissors. So they look somewhat symmetrical. Butterflies are symmetrical creatures. Uh, they are an insect, which means they have six legs, not eight, but six legs. They have three body parts. I'd be lying if I told you what they were, but basically it's the head, and then they have this middle section where their legs are, and then they have this other section. You can see it better in like wasps, those nasty little guys that like to sting you, or ants. Well, of course, here in Texas we have fire ants, another nasty little guy that likes to uh, sting you. Okay. So once you have your shapes all cut out, you're ready to have fun. You do not need to be super crazy like myself and have almost every single color of Sharpie out there, but this is kind of like my thing. I love my Sharpies. Uh, you could just, like I said, if you have some nail polish and you just want to kind of like drizzle it over or make a neat little polka dot effect to it, uh, that's called pointillism, by the way. Or if you just have a couple colors. Uh, here I discovered like the red, the orange, and the yellow worked really good over here. And here the, um, the blues, the greens, and the purples. Uh, most of the kids that have been in art can already tell you, oh, she used fire colors over here, she used the cool colors over here, warm colors, cool colors. They're analogous colors. They're next to each other on the color wheel. These give energy. These give a more calming effect. And, of course, being the art teacher I am, it's got to make a statement. Um, so, however you decide to do it, once you have them cut out, you have your little plan of action, you get to do the fun part, and that is decorate. We move some of the stuff around. So again, you could just use the one color and ooh, I really want to try my new computer. Or I'll wait on it. I was going to zoom in, but I still need to figure out my computer. Since I've been home and I've been making these things, my husband got excited and said, you need the proper equipment. 
So he buys me this fun, fancy stuff, and now I'm looking at it going, hmm, maybe I need to play around with this, figure out how to do it. All right. So when I do my butterflies, I can do those three little sections that I was talking about. You could add your little smiley face to it. I usually don't. I just add the eyes. If I'm dealing with this one color, and I'm going to do things like trace around. Now butterflies, believe it or not, have four wings. They have the two. on the top and they have two on the bottom so one two three four so as I'm going along and I can always come back in and trim this a little bit more or leave it you could even have a circle shape and just decorate a butterfly in there And to make it not so overwhelming when I'm decorating my big art piece, to avoid your children just coloring it, oh, blue's my favorite color, I'm just going to do it all blue. If you break it up into sections and you tell them they have to change colors, you're going to get a much more uh, appealing artwork. They're going to like it a lot more especially once they start getting past their everything has to be blue or everything has to be pink phase or everything has to be yellow or orange or red whatever their favorite color is mm -hmm. so as you see i'm kind of separating the wings right now I'm trying to remember what i did there I'm giving a little shape to the wings probably will not be cutting these anymore. Uh, you never know. One moment I'm perfectly happy and the next I'm like, oh, oh, you know what else I could do? I could do this. Yeah. And then I start breaking it up into smaller sections. And even just using the one color that I have here, it's already making it more interesting. I'm trying to make it somewhat symmetrical, but not perfect. I love the books that have the butterfly wings and they look at the designs and you can actually see different letters in them and then they put all the butterfly wings together that have these letters and it's like the A, B, C, D alphabet uh, going on. Let's see, I'm, I'm thinking I like kind of that curve cross, ah, cross contour lines across his body or her body. And, and adding some other little shapes in there. Again, kind of the same, but not perfect. I find I forgive myself more when... I deliberately try and mess it up just a little bit, and then it's okay if it's not perfect. I know I have a few students that would just be like, nope, it has to be perfect. It just, it just has to be. 
they go for that perfectionism and I love them for it because I am not that kind of mindset. As, as I said earlier, I'm kind of that happy-go-lucky person. I'm going to add some filled-in areas. And creating interest, dark areas, light areas not everything the same and to show you that even if you have just one color marker you can still make this super interesting or again if you have the luxury of multiple markers you can go as fun as you like. Please do not feel that if you're like Miss Howard here and you have all those different color markers that you have to use all the colors in your artwork. No, little restraint goes a long way. Okay. I'm thinking I could match up. I have a little curved piece of milk carton here. I'm going to do kind of the same idea of the lines as I did there. Kind of bring it down. I have these nice little circles. And I have that little dark line, so I might continue that idea. Let's see. I'll do the dark line right here. Okay. Well, I'm really thinking about it. I got real quiet there. Add some circles or oval shapes in here. Not matching it perfectly, but at the same time, making the eye hunt for everything, creating that movement. And it's kind of pleasing that you're seeing similarities when you're dealing with something that's a little bit more symmetrical. But there are no rules in art. Please, please feel free to put your own creative twist on this. Oh, I just felt like that was too much space right there. Oop, I added a little blob there, so let me go ahead and add a little blob on these. Happy accidents. Oh, I like that so much better. Now I want my little blobs on all my lines. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like I said, you can have fun with this. Now, the difficult part is how we're going to hang it. You have options in this area. It depends on what you have available to you at your home. Your parents can always put in a couple little slits like in the body. Let's see if I can do this without hurting myself. I happen to have the corner of the milk container for this butterfly, which means it's extra thick plastic right there. Okay, so... Get the 
making myself a little bit of a hole where I can put some string through there. I happen to have a bunch of uh, this really nice thin string and I think I'm going to add a second hole because then maybe my butterfly could be flying around. Oh, FYI for your information, if you want to come back on the back side, since you can see your lines, you can trace right on top of them and that'll be vivid on both sides. That's entirely up to you. Okay. You do have that option. I did not do that, but at the same time you can see it pretty well through there. Uh, just keep in mind any words you put on there, on the other side it's, it's going to be backwards. It's going to be like a mirror image. So always be thinking of how your artwork is going to be portrayed or displayed. Maybe in these times where people are a little bit more stressed than usual, you could make something that inspires hope and happiness, calm, um, peace, tranquility. And now I just did that. I'm going to laugh if I'm trying to poke it through the wrong hole. It's right on that plastic seam, so it doesn't want to go through. There we go. I got it to go through. Yay. Oh, all right. Now, how do you get your string through? It's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Lucky for me, I have a variety of needles. I have the tapestry needles. I have size 14, and I believe this smaller one is size 16. So 14, believe it or not, is the bigger needle. 16, or maybe it's an 18, is this one in the middle. It's more pointy, but it's skinnier but it still has this nice big opening that I can put my yarn through it. And then you have your regular sewing needle that you can get in all of those uh, sewing kits. They're all over the place. Everybody's tearing their clothes here and there. It's a great skill to know. Okay. You can choose one of those. I already have my string on this. so. I believe I am going to go through my hole. And through the other hole. And now I have all kinds of options here. I could even attach it and go through this one. Let's say I did that. Then these two will be connected to each other and they would spin around. Or I could take my my stick. I had a really big one that I was going to use. But I'll just demonstrate on the smaller one. And you can have your little butterflies. Make sure you figure out what you're going to do. You can tie it on and then you can tie it on to your outdoor little twig stick. You can hang it on a coat hanger. Give me, I have this stuff. I still have to reach for it. And, you know, you can hang it on to a coat hanger. You can even leave the paper on your coat hanger and do beautiful little art on there. And then you could tape it on. 
There are so many different options you can do. You could even do, hmm, like we did old school, we would crisscross our coat hangers and then you can have them hanging from the different corners as well as the middle. So at this point, I'm going to let you have the freedom to decide how you want to make your kinetic art move. Hang them in one long line, have each one with their own string attached to different spots, okay. or attach them all to your tree branch and hang your tree branch so your tree branch is the only thing that spins around. You can staple them that way if you'd like. I hope you enjoyed this project. There are many more exciting, fun, different ways of doing art with found objects and even drawings at KDH Art Class. Don't forget to subscribe to get all the latest projects that I put online. Have a great day. Bye.